Here walks a ronin, a follower of the warrior's way, Bushido. He holds his honor and compassion close to his heart, his blade close to his chest. Today the warrior passes by an emaciated beggar dressed in rags, hands out and looking for a meal. He ain't got no Gucci, he stacks, no paper, he gets no bitches. The warrior considers walking away, but he feels an obligation to this person, an invisible hand pushing him to help this poor soul. Come with me, I know a good ramen vendor. Thank you for your kindness, stranger. I was sure I would go today without a meal. No need to thank me. Hunger creates a lapse in one's judgment. I might be saving someone else from your desperation down the line. Aren't you implying I would steal from another to save myself from hunger? I know I would do things I regret if I were in your position. I can't say I wasn't thinking about it, but surely I would have enough of a mind to remain honorable. It's much easier to speak of one's honor than to be honorable. I suppose that's true. What's your name, stranger? You know my name, Simon. How's the ramen today, Simon? Delicious as always, Makoto. I can't believe it's been five years since I found you begging on the streets, nearly starving to death. <laughs> Glad I was feeling generous that day. So am I, friend. Thank you. Hey, what's up? How's it going? What that smell like? And why? Why do everybody support back at it again? I don't give a f I am a boy. In my heart, I'm a That is what I am. What up, bitch? Step right up, everyone. Welcome to the show. We've got a spectacle for you today, so here we go. Katana Zero, released April 18th, 2019 and developed by ASCIISoft, a small indie team consisting of just one legend, Justin Stander, worked on the prototype for Katana Zero while still in college and over the course of six whole years. He managed to create this romp through a neo-noir, neon-punk, slavcore, kimono-coated adventure. He managed to get the game published by our familiar friend Devolver Digital. Hello, Hello darling. It's nice, nice to, to see, see you. you. Katana Zero is a fast-paced, violent trudge through a heavily thematic and disturbing story that will seem pretty familiar if you pay attention. Grab your blade and slide into the Gita of Zero, a nameless samurai assassin with undiagnosed autism and the power to manipulate time. As we slice our way through a vaporwave VHS filtered world of tomorrow, we begin to unravel our traumatic past with our professional yapper therapist slash contractor who attempts to teach us eye contact and empathy along with encounters with various criminals unfortunate enough to be our targets. Throughout our journey, we discover the truth behind our powers, our crippling heroin addiction, and a mysterious drug coursing through the city's veins. Why are we here? Who are we really? And what have we become? What have I become? Delving into the dark corners of our psyche may prove to be more than we bargained for, but the more we learn of our past, the more we can save our future. So don your kimono, sharpen your katanas, be prepared to become intimately familiar with the restart button, cause on today's episode of Not A Review, I'd like to talk about... Mechanicus, Mechanicus, 
Katana uh, Zero is touted as a 2D side-scrolling hack and slash bullet time, pixel art, pixelated genitals, hyper-violent, perfect attendance, self-checkout, paranoid, schizophrenic with a value equal to or less than the refunded purchase price. Game. Movement. Crouch. Sneak. Walking. Running. Sprinting. Jumping. Wall jumping. Rolling. Dodging attacks and hazards. Prior. Slam doors open and if an enemy is right next to the door, we can make quite the entrance. The sword can eliminate most enemies with one strike and deflect shots with the right timing. We can deflect entire bullets, but we can't block a human fist. It makes no sense. It doesn't fit. Slow-mo. Yes, that's two games with a slow-mo mechanic in a row. Do something about it, bitch! Due to Zero's crippling opiate addiction and fixation on model trains, he has gained future sight and supernatural reflexes. Utilizing the focus bar, Zero can slowly perceive enemy attacks for deflection or dodging, a move best utilized for impressing the hose. We can also create a bigger reaction window when figuring out where to move to avoid area hazards and maneuvering during boss battles. Much like Planned Parenthood, Katana Zero runs off of a one-hit, one-kill philosophy. No hearts. No hit points. No watermelon. Is Donkey Kong racist? No vial of blood telling you you need to suck the blood of the innocent or an old f telling you your health is low. Do you have any potions? Or food? Luckily, the enemies also run on this system, so once you have the timing, blocking, dodging, and time manipulation down, taking out an entire room of goons in a one-shot run like Birdman is very satisfying. Once a room is cleared, we get a full speed replay, kind of like a manhunt type of situation, except hopefully whoever is watching us kill rooms full of thugs isn't gooning to the footage. Ah! Jesus, Cash! That's the money shot! And you know, I, I know it's supposed to make it extra disturbing the fact that he's all getting off on it, but... It just feels nice to be appreciated. You're a pussy. Standard took the style of his previous games, Tower of Heaven and Pause Ahead, to create short levels with dangerous instant death scenarios. The gameplay has been compared to another popular Devolver digital game, Hotline Miami, which Standard has said he's played once but didn't really remember. He said 2013's Samurai Gun, a game he felt used one-hit kills more effectively, was a bigger influence. The only other mechanic, if you can call it that, is the dialogue options. The dialogue doesn't really change the story, but it is funny to flirt with the hotel desk clerk by talking about anime, every weeb's fantasy, or cutting people off when they're annoying, cuz it ain't nothing to cut that bitch off. Script, style, and sound. Alright, I'm gonna say it. Stop there, children. Katana Zero has that sauce. Usually, I don't like the type of people who use the word aesthetic, but this game is aesthetic as f Katana Zero, much like Hotline Miami and more recently Mullet Mad Jack, has that 80s ultra pixel hyper violence neon coke binge presentation. Regarding the artists who worked on the game, I will read this excerpt from Wikipedia. The art style was inspired by neon lighting aesthetics associated with the 1980s. Recruiting artists proved challenging. Stander called himself a terrible artist, and for two years, no artists worked on the game. He found artists through the online independent developer community TigSource, but said it was difficult to recruit high-quality pixel artists who would commit to the project. He considered being able to get an artist team to finish the game mere chance, and credited the artists with motivating him to finish. The revolving door of artists makes it hard to pin down and credit the right people, so other than showing the credits, if anyone involved with making this game ever sees this, thank you for your hard work and contributions. I... I love you. b b, -b baka You sussy baka The streets, clubs, offices, and penthouses of New Mecca evoke a certain energy when leaving a trail of bodies through it. I sat and thought about this feeling, and the only term I could come up with is neon grime noir. Like... 40k if the Imperium worshipped that sweet, sweet booger sugar instead of a gold dick in a chair and listened to a little too much stitches. This bright but dim setting is matched perfectly by the game's OST. Yeah, so Justin decided to hire these composers Bill, Kyle, and Luna Wick based on some of their work in previous games. Standard even found Luna Wick by listening to their music on YouTube. From the high intensity thumping beats of the club scene to the intense compositions for boss fights and combat levels to the subtle, sometimes ominous ambient sounds of the more sedated scenes and segments.
Bill Kiley and Ludo Wick nailed the Katana Core Blade Wave presentation The Art of the Game evokes and hits you with fitting acoustic elements related to the story's emotional bits. The third district theme also sounds like it could be in Spider-Man's Mysterio's Menace. Hats off to the composers. Kudos. In the possibly near future, the nation-state of New Mecca is dying from within as it suffers the fallout of the cro mag War. The city's third district festers with poverty and corruption. They don't even have a Starbucks. Mega corporations control nearly every facet of the city's infrastructure and operation. Joking is illegal, and the robots are huffing jankum. Roving gangs of drug-addled psychopaths ride through the streets, causing havoc and operating on behalf of governmental and corporate interests. The AI formerly known as Taylor Swift has just released Xur's 40th album. It went platinum within 5 minutes. This place radiates evil energy and there is only darkness under these neon lights. Among this chaos sits us, Zero, a young assassin with asocial pathologies, contracted with taking out whoever our psychiatrists slash drug dealers handlers deem in need of a control Z, we believe we're doing a good thing, noble even. Perhaps through these contracts we can find redemption and solace from the specters of our past, along with finally being able to ask for extra pickles on our burgers. How far will we go to find peace, reclaim honor, stop obsessively arguing about Warhammer and reluctantly protect those we find along the way? Let's not dilly-dally then. Time to make the biscuits. Oh hey Zero! The tutorial mission has us slashing through a hideout searching for a kidnapped scientist. The Sackler family has run out of native Senegalese children to collect vital organs from and hired us to find a scientist who can make synthetic ones. We put in our headphones, press play on our Casio cassette, and get to work. These lasers won't save you now, bitch! I have the power of God and anim- I said I have the power of God and anime. I have the power of God and anime on my side! Find the scientist, battered and broken. We need to get him to the extraction point. If this was the American office, here's where Zero would look at the camera like, Bwah, well that just happened. Cut to a blue haired man speaking in Cyrillic runes, Sukkahoit, calling in his boys before scurrying off, who proved to be no challenge. Triple kill. Back in our apartment, we hear the thumping beats of our neighbor's shitty jungle music, fueled by dirty ketamine cut with fentanyl. <laughs> Sip some herbal tea while flipping through the TV. You sick bastard. The news reports on the bodies found at the hideout, including government scientist Dawood Bey. They also report the serial killer known as the Dragon is still on the loose. Not the name I would choose, but alright. We decide to get some sleep. There's a new assignment tomorrow, after all. Young Zero? Back when he was called Negative One? In the therapist's office, we explain our nightmare, delving deeper until the stress becomes too much and we request our meds. Daddy needs his juice. The therapist gives us a needle full of the sauce and we get slumped. We also receive our next assignment. Josh Rose, a philanthropist tech billionaire manlet responsible for war racketeering and drug trafficking. Burn after reading. 
enter the lobby of the murder hotel, where we run into a QT 3.14 con slut who asks us about our favorite animus, become the Rizzler to access the top floor, promising to hit her up for some crunchy roll and chill once we're done here. Editor's note, Joshy Ball didn't do this, he just pissed her off. I used General McBadass's clip for the flirting, but either way you get past her. Someone raises the alarm, but that isn't an issue. Hey, who'd win in a fight? The dragon or strong Terry? Power scalers, murder them in cold blood. We reach Josh Puffin that strong, lighten power poles in the penthouse after tickling freshly 18 e-girls. I'm sorry, I'm scared. <laughs> know what I'm saying? He's surprised to see us. He didn't know there were more of us left. Huh? What do you mean, you people? He laments over the war, regretting the pain he caused through us and does his best capital steez impression. Police are surrounding the building and if we hadn't been a dick to the receptionist, she would have covered for us and she might still be alive to watch animus with us. No BPD waifu for you, homie. We return to our apartment building where a small shadow creature known as a child bumps into us. Hey, watch where you're going. The fuck you say to me, you little shit? This is Elizabeth, and like most children in impoverished areas, Liz is unsupervised and unaware of her parents' location. We tell her that children are better off not being near us. You can see this is an example of the kind of structure that I'm referring to. <laughs> another sip of tea, another news story of our handiwork, and are these dudes just playing loud music while sitting around watching TV every day? Do they exist just to make sure I can't sleep? Another nightmare. The monster running at us turns into an older lab coat wearing POS, person of science. A shadowy figure appears behind him and gives him the old Seth Rich sayonara before we frantically rustle out of sleep, facing a new day. We regale the therapist with the riveting tale of meeting Lizzie, to which he acts surprised that a child would be anywhere near the third district. He gives us another shot of the wacky slash and our next assignment. DJ Electrohead, involved in the trafficking of club drugs and permanently banned from the Mad Decent Boat Party. Diplo put a hit out on him after he was caught sexually harassing Alice in Wonderland. Whatever happens, do not speak to him. Burn after reading. Welcome to Club Neon. I thought black people had big dicks. Oh, it's not, you're not hard. I get it. Yeah, that's fire, man. Nice to meet you, brother. HPV Mecca of New Mecca. This stealth section requires blending into a crowd, the ultimate test of our ASD. Overcome overstimulation from the music and lights, don't talk about model trains and hide among the partygoers. We enter the back rooms where we kill strong Terry! No! I guess we figured out who would win that fight. Bypass gunmen, turrets, and the council of skinny Rickies, keepers of the pompadour, to reach the disco deviant. We break the no talking rule to gather more information. He begs us not to kill him, promising to give the drugs back. Wait, what drugs? He tells us there was an unlabeled bottle in a storage unit he bought in an auction. When he tried it, time itself seemed to slow down. And he's been having repeating hallucinations ever. He's having been repeating hallucinations. Been having repeating hallucinations ever since. Just as we decide to spare his life, he. Hey, a job done is a job done. Rest in peace, very dead Mal Five. Return home where we find Lizzie unsupervised playing with her toys in the hallway. What you playing on there, Mickey Mouse? <laughs> she accuses us of harboring her other toy, Leviathan, in our apartment. She calls our place a dump as if she doesn't live right next door. Like, who the fuck are you, bitch? You don't even pay rent in this motherfucker. After finding Leviathan and returning him to an ungrateful Lizzie, she allows us to keep him for protection, demanding that we treat him well or suffer the consequences. Consequences will never be the same! Sipping our herbal, the news reports the deaths of DJ Electrohead and new mecha micro-celebrity Strong Terry. We return to the dream, where the shadowy figure kills the scientist and grabs our friend, throws her into the machine, turning her into a... baby shark? Do 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 do? Their guns turn on us, and... We really should see a therapist about this. Oh, wait. The therapist gets aggro over us speaking to Electrohead, telling us the drug the DJ was zooted off of is the same one that grants our special abilities. He reminds us that many details of our missions are kept on a need-to-know basis, and we are very much not in a need-to-know position. 
we're working to end illegal drug trafficking in the third district. When this is over, you may return to a normal life if you desire. Stop the cap. <laughs> Promising to be a good dog, we receive a shot of that sludge. We receive our next dossier, Fa Yuan, political dissident and leaker of <laughs> Scheduled to testify in a military tribunal, he will not be making his court date burn after reading. Oh yeah, this music f***ing hits! Open the door where the guards are taken care of. Jesus Christ. Look for Fa Yuan where we find him looking for a peanut butter sandwich. Who should have did this? Oh sh 12. Slice through the officers and skedaddle. I really don't know what you people want from me. I haven't killed any of the targets myself. I'm a victim of circumstance! On our walk home, we run into an allegory for Vietnam and its consequences, dressed in rags with a sign reading Mecca Lies. Real lies, real lies, real lies. Hey, Papa needs his medicine. Hey, you think I could get a little squirt? Just want a little squirt. A little squirt. Help out an old vet. I killed six Cro-Mag bastards in the war. I killed Finny Man. Glad to see the new Mecha VA operates just as effectively as ours. Unfortunately, we have nothing to give him. Yeah, that's what I tell them too. He sees our orientation and turns into uncle no longer invited to Thanksgiving. Chill, Lieutenant Dan, the trees don't talk anymore. Call him your shaky DT and ass down. Didn't you hear? It's the 21st century, everyone's addicted to heroin now. You ain't special. We show him our service medal to stop a possible stabbing, his stabbing, but his ass flashbacks and accuses us of taking it from him. The big bad vet who killed six crow mags, definitely a slur by the way, becomes a little bitch hall monitor calling for the police to help him. You slimy hobo, the police aren't coming, we're in the poor part of town. Our sigma male nature tempts a Patrick Bateman moment. But we decide it would be best to just go home. An unfamiliar silence fills our building. Lizzie plays on the floor of our hallway with no supervision again and hands us a videotape. Thankfully, while watching it, she gets scared and leaves before it gets too graphic. That blue-haired gopnik roid rages on our junkie neighbors for not having any fucking Yeezy. Five albums, a hundred songs, and you ain't got no fucking Yeezy. I bet you got some Jake Kwan. You ain't got no fucking Yeezy. He acts like a legit Sundere. No. Yandere? No. Jandere? Talking about how obsessed he is with us, he's torturing our neighbors because their loud music keeps us from sleeping. Look man, I appreciate the gesture, but I only think about doing this stuff, I don't really want it to happen. Mostly. He administers a new formula of the drug everyone seems to have, and the camera cuts off. The shadowy figure shoots the scientist, we hide under the bed. They approach the machine and all goes red. Bars. Awaken, Shinobi. The Leaf Village is under attack. Nah, I'm just playing. It's time to go to therapy. The note on his door says our appointment has been rescheduled for tomorrow. I certainly hope nobody's methadone script ran out today. As we walk home in the rain, this fucker pulls up next to us in a stretch hummer because of course it's a stretch hummer. Why do Russian men have no sense of fashion? Tiznayeshto eto pravda. He immediately gets to glazing and offers some party favors. His gang is attempting to recreate a wartime combat drug. You mean Pervitin? No, you can't use my sword to cut your drugs, junkie. Are these girls okay? I mean, that's better than what I assumed. Sweetie, you should call your father. He's probably worried about you. Or maybe he's not, that's probably how you ended up here. Homeboy gets ganked up on that stardust and suggests making a snuff film with him and the girls. No thanks, I'd rather not recreate August Underground with you. So-called straight men when they try stimulants. 
when two men deal with each other, they're splitting everything down the middle. Damn, like that's crazy because homosexual dudes get way more sex than heterosexual guys. Why is that? <laughs> they don't deal with women. Just get but on grinder. See where I'm going here? Yeah, yeah. Get what the hell they need done and then go right back to work. It's more it's it's quicker, more transactional, yeah. and then also yeah. when two men deal with each other. Less effort. It's less effort. No, that's actually true. We reasonably tell him to get fucked. After being rejected, like all insecure men, he accuses us of thinking we're better than him. What, you think you're better than me? Nobody's better than me! He calls us a whore, a slut, and a prude. We're ugly anyways. He never even wanted to clap our ratchet ass cheeks. Fuck you then, bitch! Bucket mouth hoe! Humph. <laughs> he blocks us on all social media and kicks us out. We chase after the limo because we forgot to get the redhead's number. Remember, fellas, baddies who hate their daddies give the bomb pop slop top. I mean, people suck dick for money. We see him in front of Studio 51 and deflect his shot before he sucker punches us and runs inside the studio. Like a little bitch. Blue hair activates the security system, forcing us to take the elevator. These thugs won't know what hit him. Open the door, get on the floor, everybody walk the- Damn it. These floors are dressed up as parodies of different movies and games. I recognize all of them except for Current Floor. I haven't seen that movie. The first floor is an homage to sci-fi like 2001 A Space Odyssey, complete with aliens, technology, and you will be assimilated as robots. My name is JP. I'm a robot. I like robots. I have a robot vagina. I am not amused. The next floor, Quiet Hills, features the familiar fog, dirty tiled walls, and oh my god, it's Pyramid Head! The third floor, Chapel of Doom, has us riding a minecart. <laughs> After collecting the key card from each floor, we're able to reach the boss. He scares off the hose, and the fight begins. While in the midst of combat, we fight off the. Snow? Another assassin? Working with this troglodyte? She tests our flinch game, clearly she knows ball, and sends us on our way, leaving with her guard dog. Although looking at their dynamic, she might be the guard dog. That feeling when the really cute smart girl is dating a buff re- Back home, sip some herby full tea loaded while the news- Lizzie, trick or treating? Dressed as me? <laughs> That's pretty good, Lizzie. <laughs> nice bathroom. <laughs> Let me see if I have anything. Wow. Good luck getting anything better around here. Hope you don't get any sour Skittles sprinkled with fentanyl. Cobby Lame got me addicted to fentanyl. Cobby Lame? Really? Cobby Lame put this gun in my mouth. Put some more. Come on, don't be shy, put some more. <laughs> Two shadowy figures appear next to us, comedy and tragedy. They drugged our tea, but even worse, they're theater kids. What do you want? If you're going to recite Hamilton, just kill me now. We're instead asked to hearken upon their words. Yeah, hearken, bitch! Translating thespian talk into functional human language, they explain that in three days' time, we will be presented the choice between life and death. Whichever choice we make, they will take the other. A life for a life. We attempt to explain the masked men to the therapist, confused on how we arrived here. Blue hair? Uh... Twenty-eight years in that godforsaken jungle. Burning those villages, watching those naked peasants cry. I see it every day. It's not PTSD, it's the drug. It's only been a week, but it feels like a year. When the drug runs out, time stops, and you're stuck in the jungle forever. Grains of sand in a shrinking hourglass.
It's only been a day since his last taste. The drink is all this man ever was, and when it is gone, what remains is the bottle. Visions. Horrid visions. Aches. Chills. Sweating. Anxiety. Paranoia. Self-hate. Hate. Hate. We believe hell a location, a place, a destination, never considering that should we drink from the fountain of our own weakness, we become trapped in a hell of our own waking nightmare. Side effects? Withdrawals? Were the masked men real? Hmm. Next target, al Qasim. Close ties to new Mecca government, military R&D, dealings in logistics and consulting, war profiteer and drug trafficking, personal friend of Tim Houthi Halalame. Burn after reading. Mansion hideout. We find blue hair explaining an Ethiopian necktie to a subordinate. Fight through the mansion until we reach... Tied up in a dark room getting beaten up by a sociopath? I miss her, bros. Blue hair no longer worships you. He wants you to know that he ripped all of your pictures off the wall. We spit in his face before he instructs his cohort, Mr. Kissy Face, to cut our head off once he's done. Sure thing, V. V. Just wait until I get out of this chair. Oh. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. I want answers, V. Yeah, I know your name. Look, he's shook. Kissy Face suggests an Ethiopian necktie while V whines that he'll be late for his date. I bet she's ugly, V. He calmly responds by shooting us in the head again. Repeat the cycle until V realizes, oh, sh you're not here for the Kronos. You're already on it. Kronos? Another figure mumbles, Al Kasim? We go through this cycle a few more times until V fails to get our supplier's name. He cries, saying that we could have been great together. Ha! Gay! Kills Kasim and leaves Kissy Face to deal with us, leading to our first real boss fight. That is bullshit blazing! To my heart is blazing! If I lose my Later, we give him that full necktie before escaping the room. Snow and V stand outside, wondering how to explain the dead Kasim and their failure to squeeze the secrets of Kronos production out of him to their employers and investors. Snow attempts to psychoanalyze us before she's Sinbon Zakura, almost cutting V in the process. We appear, ready for revenge. Oh no you don't, get back here you little bitch! Hop on a bike and pursue this 2077 reject. Oh shit. V becomes a red crayon hitting the I'm alright bro. It ain't hurt bro. He has a full on spurg out at us now that he's at our mercy. Clearly he does not know ball. He calls himself the dragon slayer cringe before a voice announces he is not the dragon. Fuck saying that. Huh? I am. Yeah! A blonde swordsman. He. She's been hunting V down, but why? We aren't sticking around to find out. I need a drink. Barkeep. Well whiskey. Give me that real rot gut sh like Kentucky Dale or Heaven Hill. Oh, you don't have any of that? Well, give me some of that. Uh. Blue goo on the rocks. 
A couple of redneck new mecha veterans sitting down the bar lament the loss of the Cro-Mag War. They say we look too young to have served and wonder if our service medal was from a pawn shop. Ain't nobody but vets and junkies in the 3rd district, and you ain't a vet. Oof, buddy, what does that say about the vets in that case? After a wholesome toast to the murder of Cro-Mag children, the drink flows and we have a grand old time. Cigars are smoked, bad company covered by Five Finger Death Punch on the jukebox, and all the slurs you can muster. One of the patrons explains to us he thought he would get more pussy after the war, but the liberals in the first district made everyone at home hate the child-killing soldiers. Cancel culture strikes again. Turns out alcoholism and a hellcat wasn't worth the years of flashbacks and social stigma. He says everyone got a bad rap because of government-controlled psychic super soldier death squads in a privately funded combat drug program. Sound familiar? I knew it, man. They gave the soldiers chemicals that gave them special powers and turned them gay. All of our targets have been war profiteers who help make the drugs to hide the secret formula. Billionaires are buying up all the farmland. Dylan Mulvaney can't sing. The floors, man. They're under the floors. The bugs. The bugs are in my skin. They're in my skin. I gotta stop smoking this. The night goes on and we get white girl wasted. And then like... Closing time. The other guys paid your tab, so get the f out of my bar. Wobble back home where we find Lizzie, unsupervised, again. Oh man, I don't want her to see us like this. What the f are you talking about? I could go for a crunch rap right now. The news reports on our highway activities and we just... Uh. Lizzie, what do you want? Look, if you aren't here to give me a bottle of Pedialyte, I don't want to hear it. Huh? You actually needed my help last night? I'm sorry. This isn't the first time my drinking has disappointed the people around me. Your dad had a gay meth gangbang and you hid under the stairs with Behemoth? Jesus, this kid cannot catch a break. We feed her some protein paste? Before making our way to the therapist, who is none too pleased with our highway danger zone. Look man, I didn't start any of this stuff. I haven't even killed any of the people you assigned to me. Can you just tell me it's everyone else's fault? Give me my drugs and next political target like every other therapist? He berates us for being so brazen and... Oh. Oh no. Oh fuck no. What the fuck? V, armless and maidenless, explains the absolute hell that is Kronos withdrawal. Being stuck in a time loop like a bad acid trip, never moving forward in time, always stuck in a moment of pure torture with no end in sight. Sounds like dinner with my ex-wife, Bazinga! The therapist doses us up and we return to normal, supposedly. He gives us our next target until we tell him about the real dragon on the highway, to which he becomes instantly interested. Oh, say less. They are now our new target, but one more slip up and we will be replaced. Burn after reading. Enter the eerily empty Chinatown Casino. Time to do some gambling. Just like Sonic! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Enter the VIP area where the dragon and a green samurai robot? are talking to each other about V and getting revenge on the people who made Kronos. The people who turned them into horrible addicted monsters, forcing them to fight wars, commit atrocities in exchange for relief from the hell they forced on them, and purging them when they were no longer useful. The dragon wants to show his comrade the... Got a blast. Now this boss fight might be harder than normal because... Oh sweet. Oh, wait, what? More super soldiers with the same powers as us? Grab the security tapes and pursue the dragon. We need answers. Oh no, it's the cops! Hey, shut your bitch ass up, nigga. Nobody asked you how to bitch. Fight your way through and chop chop down through Chinatown. 
Cops with shotguns and riot shields may provide a challenge, but we still slice through them with the greatest of ease. Hmm... This might be the end. The golden moon casteth wide its brilliant smile upon the altar of the ablution. Thy baptism of blood draws nigh. Well, 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 look who it is. The theater kids. Time to choose, Sophie. Life or death. We are who we choose to be. Now choose! Thou choosest to bear the silver mask of death and scorn the peace of final death. Know that others shall bear the consequences of thy choice. Farewell, errant heart. Bunkai! Lizzie, you're still here? Where are your parents? Thanks for cleaning, though. Let's go get a movie. What do you want to watch? Wish? Uh, no. We're gonna watch real cinema. We're getting Spy Kids. Frozen? I bet you haven't even seen a Serbian film. You do not know Kino, and you certainly do not know Ball. We sit this young child down to watch samurai movies. Probably not even Kurosawa, pleb. After scarring her for life, we drift off to sleep. Bro, we made her sleep on the floor? At least offer the couch. It's not like we're getting good sleep anyway, even if the neighbors are a lot more quiet these days. Time to see what's on that security tape. Security footage from the prison, and we get to play as the real dragon, who can take out multiple enemies in one swing of his... her... our... blade. We fight through the guards to reach Fa Yuan. Give me the names, Lebowski! al Kasim. Is he bringing Kronos back? Is he involved with V and Snow? Answer me! Fa Yuan doesn't know anything. He's been in jail for seven years. Just let the man go. We get one more name out of him. The original creator of Kronos. Leon von Alvensleben. He begs for his life, but the dragon does not oblige. They all have to pay for what they did to us. Imagine dying by Swirly. Embarrassing! <laughs> The therapist's office is closed once more. An unknown caller tells us Leon can be found in the 3rd District Slaughterhouse. And a slaughterhouse it will become. Ooh, laughter house! A gaunt man appears on the TV, telling us this facility was the testing grounds for the Null Project. New Mecca's top soldiers and scientists were tested to prove their worthiness of being Kronos recipients and researchers. We must prove our worth by slashing through the gauntlet of riot shielders, shotgunners, and hydraulic press YouTube channels. After the divorce, Laurie from hydraulic press channel went a little bonkers, and there's one thing he never tried hydraulic pressing. People. Thugs, lasers, and Sniper Wolf, the attractive one, all gun for us until we finally manage to- Wow. Wow. That room f***ed you up. We finally manage to see this stranger spout some manosphere talking points and tell us that we aren't an alpha male or beta male. We're a gamma male. Wake up, babe. New male just dropped. Raised from childhood to be a Kronos soldier, our mastery of time and combat made us a god of the battlefield. Ultimately, the project and, by extension, we, were failures. A waste. And now all the remaining soldiers need to be decommissioned now that they are more of a liability than an asset. He destroys the Kreth lab and bids us adieu. You get nothing! You lose! Good day, sir! Inside his lab, we release him from the cryo chrono chamber, and he instantly turns into Hercules in the whirlpool. Don't care, nerd. L plus ratio. Returning home, Lizzie tells us she found something today and brings us to the roof of our building. Wow. Good find, kid. 
We decide to functionally adopt her, I guess her parents won't mind, promising to get her far away from New Mecca and protect her. Always. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Child, what do you want? She made brekkies. Hell yeah, what we got? Fish heads and protein paste. Please learn how to grocery shop while raising this child. Our therapist is not Robin Williams today. It is very much our fault. But we know about the Kronos, Doc. We know about Null. Look, Look at me. I am the therapist now. We make him explain the project which was shut down because of the unforeseen lethality of Kronos withdrawal. We acknowledge our impending doom should the Kronos run out, but he assures us there's enough left to keep us alive, as long as we remain compliant. The purpose of our missions was to ensure that Kronos never returned to the world. This clicks the next piece of the puzzle together, that we would be the last target. This snake tells us his superiors would do no such thing. We've been a good dog. We get our shot. It really isn't fun anymore when you know you need it. And our next target. Not a person, but all the evidence of tomfoolery in Al Qasim's bunker. Expect heavy resistance. Leave no survivors. Burn after reading. Synergistics Research Center. Take out all the grunts and re- A young boy plays in a shack. A scientist yells at him to hide. A shadowy figure shoots him in the head and approaches the machine. A null soldier, filled with Kronos and hate. The climax to the first act approaches. Down in the depths of the research facility, we find the Null soldier from the casino, in the uniform from the Nightmares. It's time to go, comrade. They recognize us as a Gamma, another Null soldier hired to kill people in return for Kronos. Al Kasim's Kronos stash isn't here if that's what we're looking for. As a matter of fact, it isn't. I'm here for you, regardless if I get Kronos or not. As we loop again and again, they beg us to surrender, suggesting there may be enough Kronos in our bloodstream to keep them straight for a couple days. Okay, Astarion, chill. Kill the people who did this to us. I'll think about it. Enter the vault where we find a woman, a child, a family. Kill the child. We would have won the war if those goddamn hippies weren't bitching about the child killings. Kill the child. Kill the child. What are you doing? Your targets are still alive. Yes. Yes, he is. The bottom has fallen out. The therapist hasn't been able to reach his daughter. The employers are terminating our contract. The dreams were real. And he knew. You knew I was the soldier in the shack, didn't you? You knew I was the monster in the nightmares, didn't you? Answer me! You knew Isaac Hirschkopf! You knew all along! You will always be a monster. You will never find peace. 
you will kill everything. You cannot protect her. Search body, key card, search suitcase, chrono shipment times, and a dossier about our next target. Age 22, height 5 foot 10. He's literally me. Name, subject zero. Gamma Squadron Null Executioner. Open for third party contracts. Eliminate discreetly upon questioning purpose of contracts or gaining knowledge of chronos. Return after reading. Pleasure doing business with you, doctor. Time to go home. Cops? My landlady? What's going on? The junkie neighbor's dead? A break in my apartment? A note. One life for another. No. Where's the little girl that was here? The landlady says there are no kids in this building. The dead junkie had no children, lived alone. He had a daughter, where is she? The second cop laughs at the idea of children in the third district, but no, no, oh, no. The police ask us to come with them for questioning. No way, pig, fuck off. Where are you keeping her? They draw their weapons, but we escape their bullets. This can't be real. No, she has to be real. Lizzie. Null Zero here. The computer is disabled. Humanity, in its fear of monsters, have ourselves become monsters. War, mass murder, burning villages, empty, soulless eyes witnessing horrors beyond our capacity to machinate, simply at the behest of men who will never see the atrocities they enable. Addiction, desperate clawing to a state of equilibrium, selling one's own body to escape the downward spiral of a broken mind and a broken body. Empty, soulless eyes violating our own providence to cast dim candlelights in the shadows where God no longer chooses to illuminate. Can we expect redemption from these depths? Can we find honor in a dishonorable world? Do you believe in life after love? There may never be a return to what once was, or forgiveness for what's come to be, but a path to what will never truly vanishes, and the lights along the way shine as bright as you allow them. We do what we can in this world, whatever it takes, and sometimes it takes more than any of us are willing to give. The agonies of life can create monsters of men looking to escape their grim reality, with many deciding to do so willingly. After all, he who makes a beast of himself gets rid of the pain of being a man. There better be a f***ing sequel to this game. Well, that's all I have for you today, folks. What a ride! I cut down a lot off this script. The original was over 9,500 words, ended up with 7,400. I wasn't about to edit all that. 
I do appreciate you for making it this far. Thanks so much again to Joshy Ball for providing the footage once more to one of my videos, and I hope you are living a life worth examining, my little behemoths and leviathans, with all the health, happiness, and humility you can muster. Until the next episode, deuces. Years ago, I was Chinese.